today we are doing a really quick video here on a Dual X79 motherboard that I just received from AliExpress actually yesterday. Uh, yeah, it's the cheapest X79 motherboard I could find on the market. I think they're going for about 80 or 85 US dollars or something like that. Uh, I think I paid like 115 Canadian for it or something like that. But anyways, I just got it in the mail. This is literally the fastest I've ever received a package before from AliExpress. I think it was 13 days from the date of order to the date of receive, which is insanely fast. But uh, yeah, as you can see here, it's dual socketed motherboard. Uh, the reason it's so cheap, and I don't even know if it'll work yet, is that there's only four memory slots for two CPUs. Uh, generally, the X79 platform would like you to have four memory slots per CPU, so uh, for quad channel sake. Um, but yeah, we're just going to be testing this out in another video once I get my uh, power supply cable sorted out. Because this here requires a two 8-pin uh, CPU power connectors here, if we can get that in the shot there. And then uh, one 24-pin. nice thing is it has, I believe these are uh, two 16x slots, you can't see on the camera here, but... On the motherboard, I was just reading uh, the little notes that they had made, like just the white, uh, the white text, and it said that it's like X161 or something. So I'm a little concerned that it might not be full bandwidth. I think it just might be how they marked it down. Uh, but yeah, of course, like any motherboard from China, there is going to be no CMOS battery, and that is normal. And of course, I/O shield, which reminds me, the I/O for the motherboard quickly is right here. I think this came up on camera all right. We've got six USB 2.0 ports, two USB 3.0 ports, and a gigabit NIC, a gigabit NIC, as well as your audio. And just like the previous video we did on the Antimeter motherboard, there is, they put the audio connector right here um, at the back, so you are going to need to run the cable around the side of the motherboard again. Um, but yeah, if you haven't seen the last video I did, uh, you just go to my channel. It is a it's a nice little PC build I did, and I actually edited it a little bit. So, yeah, we're going to be installing these uh, two X56 uh, 50V2s, and, yeah, the thermal paste that we are going to be using here are the, is the GD900. Also ordered it from China, AliExpress, and as I kind of mentioned, I got the biggest uh, quantity possible here, 30 grams, I believe. And the thermal compounds worked out really well, and it's really cheap, so... Yeah, for what I do and how many systems I've been previously putting together, it's going to work out really nicely. Um, yeah, the nice thing as well, I didn't show you what came inside the package. Uh, basically, you get these two uh, adapters, so if you want to use any of the Chinese coolers like the Snowman or the uh, there's other um, cooler options for the LJ2011 socket, it'll, uh, it'll work there. But I'm just quickly and carefully taking off the uh, pin covers. Everything looks great from this, uh, kind of just from what I can see so far. So we're going to take our first CPU, which I put down to the side here. Yeah, You see, it's always easier in your head. You think like, oh, I'm going to get this perfect this time. But, I mean, when you're busy and you have stuff on the table, it doesn't always work out. But, yeah, see if I can get this to focus on the camera. But it is the, uh, yeah, I don't think this is going to work. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it's the E5 2650 V2. Um Basics installing your CPU, uh, you just check here, they're going to make a little notch. You just have to line the notch up with the CPU to make sure it goes in the right direction. Boom, it's in, it's not moving. You close it down. To close it, obviously, uh, it's simple. You just do one latch at a time. I like to put pressure on both and then do the first latch. That way that, I don't know, I just find that all the pins are going to contact a lot easier. Same deal with the other uh, side here. Um, yeah, while I'm doing this, I'll also talk about, like, if you're not familiar, the E5 2650 V2, it's got 8 cores, 16 threads, it's from the Ivy Bridge generation of CPU, um, which is basically like an i7-3770, same generation as an i5-3570, so it is, it's not, well, yeah, it is an old, it is an older generation of CPU, same deal lining up, there's a little notch here, um, it is an older generation of CPU, but the IPC is good enough. Like, it's pretty much Sandy Grinch IPC. Um, it, it, but yeah, it's good enough that you can play AAA title games, you can stream, you can game, you can use the system for a lot of different applications, and it, yeah, it'll still perform very well. So that's why I am using them here. Uh, the two CPU coolers that I'm using, they're way overkill, um, but they're just what I have at the moment. They are, let's see if I can focus, they are um, these deep cool Gamax 400s, um, 
yeah, you can also get these CPU cores from China. These are just on sale here at Canada Computers. And so I just grabbed those. They have a nice four pin connector on there and they will keep the CPU nice and cool. And if it's cool, everything is gonna run really quiet because the, the difference between going with the V2 and the V1 CPUs, like for example, a lot of people look at the E52689, the E52690, those are all V1 CPUs which run on that Sandy Bridge architecture. The difference between Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge, Sandy Bridge runs on 32 nanometers and Ivy Bridge runs on 22 nanometers, so there's a big power efficiency. Uh, yeah, there's just a big difference in power efficiency. So now all I'm going to be doing is getting out these uh, connectors and I'll be right back once I pull everything out. Alright, uh, we're back. So that took actually a lot longer than I anticipated. All I did is I had to uh, take the fan off, put these four screws on, grab some memory, and uh, yeah, now that we're going, now that that's done, I'm going to be applying the thermal compound here. And yes, obviously it would be ideal if I would zoom in here, uh, but I'm not going to because, uh, yeah, just for simplicity's sake. Uh, but what I'm going to do now is apply the GD900 here and uh, give you a little bit of commentary. <laughs> Yeah, basically it's super simple. I'd recommend if you're building a lot of systems, get a just get a huge 30 gram uh, container of this. Uh, the reason I got the biggest size is one, I do a lot of systems, and two, it takes a long time for it to come in from AliExpress. And basically when applying it, I haven't used it in a while, so it's a little bit, I guess, settled down. It's not like you can shake it or anything, but... I, yeah, basically all I'm going to be doing is covering the whole surface and thermal compound here. Um, it's basically like, yeah, maybe it's too much, maybe it's too little. Actually, it's just going to be too much, uh, but I'd, I'd rather have a little bit extra thermal compound on my uh, CPU rather than not enough. Generally, I would just use my finger to spread it out, uh, but as I mentioned kind of in another video, uh, this GD900 kind of sticks in your finger, so ideally you would have something that you can apply it better with, but... I guess for this, yeah, we're just going to be using our finger here. Not ideal at all. And, yeah, it's just because it sticks in there and it makes a huge mess. And, yeah, it's not like any of the other thermal compounds I've worked with, like uh, the MX4 or whatever it's called. Um, yeah, I think it's Arctic Silver MX4. That stuff is also really good. The only issue I've ever had with it is that it costs a lot. So, yeah. See here, there's a ton of thermal compound on here. I'm spreading it out, but as you can see, it's it's really in my finger there, which is kind of a pain, just because it's messy. So, yeah, I, th yeah, there's kind of a couple thoughts. It's like, yeah, you definitely don't need this much thermal compound. There's going to be plenty of excess, and you're like, well, isn't this a waste? And that would be a good question to kind of have. Um, and that's kind of where I say this is why I use GD900 instead of MX uh, Arctic Silver MX4, just because it's cheap, which means that. I can properly cover it without worrying like, oh, am I going to waste like a tiny bit of thermal compound? Because when you're building a system, you don't want to have like the mindset of like, oh, I need like, am I wasting something? Because it, it sucks to feel like that. Like even right now, I'm like, why am I <laughs> wasting all this thermal compound? But what, what you realize is that you want it, you want the best thermal like compound or like the best thermal conductivity as you possibly can get. Uh, just just to make sure that you have the best chance of transferring that heat properly but the biggest thing that'll make the difference is having a good um having a good heat sink and we've got ourselves some really nice heat sinks that are easily easily going to keep these uh e52650 v2s cool so that's basically how i would apply the thermal compound and i do this for all of my systems uh but yeah as you can see here it really makes a mess of your finger so yeah it's not focusing here but yeah, it makes it really mad. It, yeah, it's just nasty. You can't take it out properly. And yeah, ideally you have like a glove or something as well. Because yeah, I'm just doing this as quick as possible so that we don't waste this much time in the video. But yeah, next part that we're going to be doing is installing those two large CPU coolers. Probably before that, it would be a good idea to install your memory modules. Um, it is a smaller motherboard form factor here. Um, so you are going to want to be careful just about interfering with other parts of the board. Um, ideally, I would test the board, but I guess you need to install everything to test it. So, uh, yeah, but that's where the part two of this video will come in. I don't even know how much time we have left on my camera there. But, yeah, I, this will be an exciting project. The reason I bought this 
uh, motherboard is because I wanted to see like can you build budget dual CPU uh, configurations because if you think about it price wise if you get one of the nicer Chinese uh, motherboards like the who I don't even know how to pronounce the brands but there's like those Plex HD X79 motherboards and they're all around a hundred Canadian dollars or 90 Canadian so maybe like 60 USD 70 USD I wanted to see like can you spend a little bit more get a cheap dual socket motherboard um, and the reason being is now you get double the cores like not all applications will utilize two cores but it's like a lot of these uh, modern games like Fortnite for example yeah they can make use of all the cores yeah your frame rate's going to be the same if you have one eight core processor versus two eight core processors but now the cool thing is you can stream and play and it's not only that you can stream, like, you can stream high quality 1080p 60 frames per second at a high, like, at a high, I don't know, image quality. So, that's kind of the cool thing with having 16 cores, 32 threads on one system here. Um, but yeah, now we're going to take our two heat sinks. I'm uh, just going to make sure that, yeah, this is how we're going to put them on. You always want to make sure that you're mounting your fan and that you've got all the airflow configured or you kind of have an idea of where everything is going um, yeah I like this it came with the X79 standoff so it made makes everything a lot easier here oh actually you know what I probably can't even use these CPU coolers but just because I can't mount the fans on properly which kind of sucks so looks like we're gonna have all the air going to the top of the case but that's where I'm going to have to uh, choose a different case. But I'm planning, if you're wondering what case I plan on using for the system, I plan on using a deep cool, I believe it's called a Matrix 55. There's a couple of them, or a deep cool Matrix 50. Um, so yeah, it's going to look really nice in that case, because I did I checked all the standoffs are there, I believe, and there's plenty of room in there to uh, accommodate for like this EATX motherboard, or whatever kind of form factor you'd like to classify it as. And this is always a tricky part. You want to get all your standoffs on there. Well, you want them all screwed in here properly. These aren't even called standoffs. They're just called, I guess, your mounting points. But, yeah. See, this is, ideally, you'd have different CPU coolers. I'm going to need to get different CPU coolers. This is not going to fit the build properly. But I guess this is how you learn, right? And this is why I'm recording it, just to show you that, like, hey, maybe you thought they would work. But in reality, you're going to need different equipment. And the reason I say that is because... Like, this might fit on here, but the fans themselves, once they're on here and mounted, they're going to interfere with the memory. So, this is where I'm going to have to rethink what I'm going to use to uh, to cool the system. Like, obviously, I, if this was just my system, I would zip tie on, like, two 90 mil fans and call it a day and be happy with that. But since I may end up selling it in the future, I will have to uh, get some other CPU coolers, which kind of sucks. <laughs> Well, I'm a little disappointed because well, I wanted it to work out and all that stuff. But, um, yeah, this is kind of the gist of uh, what I'll be putting together here. Um, but, yeah, two CPUs, 16 cores, 32 threads. These are 8-gig modules, so you got 32 gig of RAM there as well. That'll be plenty, plenty, plenty to play all your games and do your streaming and video edit and all that good stuff. And, uh, yeah, I'm just curious to see how the motherboard will kind of handle handle this performance and see like maybe I can even throw two RX 570s run them in crossfire if that's supported um, but the more re I, I kind of bring that out more I'm curious uh, for video editing like programs like DaVinci Resolve or maybe Adobe Premiere I'm not I'm not too familiar with video editing um, but yeah I'm curious can they utilize multiple GPUs can this motherboard support multiple GPUs on full like uh, PCIe bandwidth and yeah we do have the NVMe slot there so yeah, this is kind of not what I was expecting the video to be, but um, it's kind of cool, I think, to share, like, okay, this is what I thought I'd be doing for a plan, and this is what it turned out. Like, this is stuff you have to deal with when putting together your system, but I guess the cool thing you can take away is if you do buy a motherboard like this, just know that you're going to need a different CPU cooler. Maybe I have another cooler here, but I don't have two of them. Like, I ordered some of these uh, uh, Chinese uh, Lang Shao uh, CPU coolers, they work really good. Uh, their packaging is pretty horrendous, so you will, like, just expect if you ever order one of these CPU coolers that there is some sort of, like, bent, <laughs> bent fins and stuff, but, yeah, this kind of, exactly what I was saying, it's bent there. It doesn't matter, it performs the same, but it's not as pretty, but, yeah, I'll probably end up buying another one of these or something that doesn't bend as bad, 
Uh, but yeah, these will definitely fit. No problem on the motherboard here. And yeah, I'll probably end up using something like this instead. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much going to end the video there. There's nothing else really to talk about. Um, yeah, that's going to end the video there. If you guys have any questions regarding this motherboard, um, I don't know enough really to answer all those yet. But if there's something you'd like to see in the future regarding videos, uh, this is a good time to also leave a comment and just kind of, you can talk to me, like, tell me, like, <laughs> do you want to see something more on the business side of, like, selling and flipping systems, or do you want to see more, like, ordering stuff from AliExpress, because I'm also looking at ordering maybe an RX 570 or 470 from there, seeing what it's like, are they dirty, are they clean, are they professionally made, like, are they properly, um, are they good graphics cards, basically, but, yeah, that's gonna end the video there. If you have any questions, definitely reach out and uh, yeah, thanks.